Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright, as hair consultant, audiologist and director of Cluax. Thank you for joining me in my latest video using the iClearscope Endoscope. And we have here a patient who attended with bilateral otitis externa. So what is otitis externa? Otitis externa is a medical name given for an outer ear infection. So it can affect the auricle, the pinna, so the satellite dish we have in either side of our heads, the ear canal itself or the outermost layer of the eardrum. So the eardrum is three ply thick. Um, the outermost layer is formed of the same epidermal skin that lines the inner two thirds of the ear canal. We then have a fibrous connective tissue middle layer, which is what gives the eardrum its strength and rigidity. And then we've got some mucosal skin, which also lines the middle ear, which makes up the third ply, the innermost layer. Um, typically, um, outer infections are bacterial, but the majority are probably 70 to 80 percent, although that I think that's an overestimation. Um, but you can also get fungal in infections of the outer ear. We call that otomycosis. And I often think that gets um, underdiagnosed. Um, I feel this is otomycosis and more specifically candida. So there's two strains of fungal infections that are most common with the ear. You can get aspergillus, which uh, you normally get fungal spores or hyphae, uh, or you can get candida where there's a thick, creamy debris, typically deeper in the area canal as well, although there is some here on the outer aspect. Um, and another reason why I think this is fungal as opposed to bacterial is that there's no real um, edema or inflammation of the ear canal, um, and there was no altalgia. Commonly with a bacterial infection, in fact, one of the bedside tests used by doctors to diagnose uh, a bacterial infection of the outer ear is either pulling the pinna back or applying pressure on the, on the tragus into the ear. And if that elicits some discomfort or pain for the patient, quite often it is bacterial. The more common symptom with a fungal infection, they're normally chronic, which it is for this patient, and also they get a lot of itchiness and dry, cracked skin. Now, you'll see better a bit later, you can probably see a bit of it there, but the whole pinna, the oracle, they had otitis externa there, and I think it was actually psoriasis, and the reason why I think it's psoriasis is there was a kind of a, a circle, very clean edged, whereas if it's eczema, you're normally a bit more rough and ragged. Um, so psoriasis is typically more of an autoimmune uh, reaction. So basically your body thinks it's infected, so it um, kind of almost attacks it and it tries to heal it and you get inflammation there. They have seen a specialist, um, they're not from the UK, I think, um, from the Middle East, and they have seen a specialist before. They gave some cream, but I just don't think it's that effective. So I've written to the doctor they've got in the UK now. Um, I need to, obviously, because I've got this infection. And I've asked the doctor to take a swab first. Um, the reason for that is if it is fungal and they're prescribed antibiotics, it will make the fungal infection worse. That's because antibiotics not only kill, or should I say inhibit, the reproduction of the pathogenic bacteria that's causing the infection, but we all got healthy bacteria um, that reside on the skin. We call that skin flora. Uh, so the antibiotics also can inhibit or kill the healthy bacteria, which means that the fungus that also, uh, we have healthy fungus that resides on the surface of the skin. It no longer has any competition. So it can cause an overgrowth of um, the fungus leading to infection. So we don't want this patient having antibiotics if they've got a fungal infection and also vice versa. <coughs> so I'm now approaching, believe it or not, that is the eardrum. And I've got this thick creamy debris on the eardrum. And it's so difficult to remove because it doesn't vacuum very well because of its consistency. It's like butter. And then underneath all that debris, they've got really dry crusted skin. You wouldn't imagine so looking at what it looks like at the moment. Now, whenever I see this, I'm also a bit weary of a middle ear cholesterotoma, which forms just to the right and a bit higher up where the suction tip is located there. So I've got this crusted skin we can see and I've got this debris. And so the back of my mind, I am thinking, is there a possible middle ear cholesterotoma hiding away? Um, about two o'clock or one o'clock even. So I'm going to clear all that debris. Uh, fortunately, it wasn't. So, so guys, um, just a quick couple of updates. 
uh, we've had so many specialist um, contact us in the past asking for samples of our Rye ear canal suction tips, which is what I'm using at the moment, and also our Rye manual instruments. And it's just because they're a bit unsure because they've never used the style of suction tips that I uh, manufacture, where you have a detachable tip and a handle, which is great. If you're not using them, you need to move across. They're so much better than what we could, what's currently available here. And also the angled instruments, because I don't believe they're available. Uh, I mean, you do get angled instruments for dentistry, for example, also for ear surgery, but I've not really seen them in the mainstream for earwax removal. Um, so they're a bit unsure. Once you use them, you, you won't go back to your normal ones, believe you me. So what I've done, I've just created a sample pack. We've had so many people inquire this week alone. So I've created a free sample pack. So if you are a suitably qualified specialist in the UK only, uh, and you want to receive some sample suction tips and manual instruments, drop us an email, um, info at clearwax.co.uk. So you've got our website bottom left of the screen. So it's just info at clearwax.co.uk. Mention the free samples. Informers of your profession and also a shipping address and we'll get it out to you. Um, I think the sample pack's worth about 15 or 20 pounds, the amount of samples we put in there. But we give you a selection of a bit of everything. Um, and yeah, let us know how you get on. There was something else I was gonna say, but it slipped my mind, obviously it wasn't that important. So this is that crusted layer of skin. And believe it or not, I actually ended up using forceps to remove that. Uh, which originally, when you're looking at that eardrum, you're like, well, there's no way you can use forceps because it's so wet and mushy. Now, they've got a few hairs matted alongside the skin, which made it a bit more tricky to remove, but I'm just peeling it from the front part of the ear canal there. Again, it is important for me to remove this, particularly higher up as well, because that's where, that's the hotspot for a cholesterol And I've seen quite a few cases like this when I peel that skin away there is a hidden cholesterol forming the tip of it. So when I do eventually use the forceps, which will be in a moment, I'm gonna grip onto that and peel up and away. <coughs> there is still a bit of debris at the base of the eardrum, which I'm gonna go back a bit later and suction that away. So here's the forceps. Now, um, I'll try and upload their right ear procedure, which is probably, a, I mean, for me, this is really interesting doing cases like this. This is not earwax removal. This is a bit more complex. Uh, but it may not make great viewing. It, it may. But um, I think the right ear, although it is an infection, it's a bit more, there's a bit more going on there. There's a lot more skin that I'm peeling off the canal wall. So I'll try and upload that over the weekend. Probably not tomorrow as I've got a clear wax training course. Well, probably that was the other thing. So uh, our training course got one tomorrow. For someone had to, pee, um, someone had to um, drop out literally today. Um, I won't explain the reasons why it's private. Um, so it's just too late to 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 kind of re-advertise that. But it's fine. We've still got uh, another delegate coming. But we've got another course on the seventh of November. I think that's fully booked now. But if you are interested, let us know. And I'm going to probably try and do one at the end of November. Then it's December where we don't really run any courses because it's coming up to uh, Christmas and the new year. I can't believe it's that time of year already. Um, and I'm going to be away next month for about two or well, three weeks, I think, in Australia. And I think mid-November, I might be going to America. I mentioned that yesterday in yesterday's video. We're just sit, um, going to wait and see if that's going to happen. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of limited in terms of training courses in the UK. I'm probably going to be training more people abroad than in the UK at the moment. But just drop us an email. It's our website's there. We've got a contact form. So I'm just peeling some of this debris off the back part of the ear canal. It's just see how mushy it is. But there is a layer of skin there. I've got hold of it, so I don't want to let go. I'm going to peel up. I was hoping it comes off the drum, but it didn't. But I'm going to get a bit more out there. So the top part of the head was fine. It's just the bottom half. And I think I'm going to target it now. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention, and you'll see the benefit. Um, I'm going to zoom in with the app. Now, if you're using the Wax Scope, you're going to be using our Clear Wax app anyway. 
But if you're using an endoscope and you're not using our Clearwax app, well, trust me guys, you need to just go to the app store, download it, because this is what's possible. And you'll see it in a moment. I'm gonna zoom in. You can see the image is larger, which means I don't have to insert the endoscope as far. I've got more maneuverability with the suction tip. And you can see the crack. You don't want to overzoom. We can really, really zoom in if you wanted to. But then you, the image gets a bit pixelated. So I've just zoomed in enough where I can really confidently see what I'm doing. And you can see that skin just peeling upwards. As I'm peeling this lower section, it's coming backwards to the anterior canal wall. And you might just have to revisit the beginning of the video, look at the eardrum and then come back to this and just see the difference. Um, um, at least we can see the eardrum now. I didn't, whenever I get cases like this, I just think back in my head, oh God, it's gonna be really, really tricky. Um, and it was. Because working this close to the eardrum, it does get the adrenaline pumping. I mean, I quite enjoy it, uh, but because of the consistency that was on there, it just makes it a bit more challenging. So I do remove <coughs> a bit more from the posterior part of the, excuse me, part, posterior part of the eardrum. There's a bit of skin on the left-hand side, the anterior quadrant, which is a bit more tricky to remove. I left bit behind. There was just a few hairs there. And ideally I needed to use the forceps, but it was so close to the canal wall that to get the jaws either side of it, the left-hand side of the jaw would have grazed the front part of the ear canal. And that would have been uncomfortable for the patient. So again, starting off, I started off in the midsection, trying to peel towards the eardrum. And I did get a layer of skin here. I think this is a 17 gauge. So that's one of the benefits of our right ear canal suction tips. To use a fine end, you don't attach something to the, the extender to the end, which makes the suction tip even longer to hold. You just swap the 14 gauge, which is the normal Zollner, for a smaller 17 or 18. So in the sample pack, I've given the 14 gauge, which is the one that we normally use. I've also provided a 16 gauge, which I use quite a lot. So it's a bit smaller, but it's still quite powerful. And then Typically in the UK, the fine end that we use is an 18 gauge, but I've, I've included the 18 gauge, but also a 17 gauge, which is my preferred one. So what I'm using is a 17 gauge here. So I'm just trying to peel it. I don't want to graze that canal wall. So that's the game of operation. We want to avoid touching the canal. And that was a good view of the the eczema psoriasis. So what do they have causing that dry cracked skin on their oracle pinna? And they had it both sides. I think the left side was slightly worse. So I'm just going to the back part of the ear canal, peeling towards the eardrum, just trying to remove a bit more dead skin here. So as mentioned, this patient we've written to their GP. I've asked for a swab, so hopefully they can get a swab first prior to receiving other anti- bacterials, antifungals, or sometimes both. Sometimes you can have a bacterial and a fungal infection concurrently. Again, the reason for cleaning this, I just want to make sure there is no, I'm not missing any retraction pocket. There's no cholesterol turmer there, which there wasn't. I think I have one last attempt at the skin, the front part of the eardrum. You see there's a few hairs there. So this will now hopefully naturally migrate because of all the debris in front of it's gone away. This skin should naturally move sideways. And the reason for these hairs, this patient went for a haircut, they mentioned the other day, and they felt some hairs go in the ear. So I've just, <coughs> excuse me, apply, as, as, advise them to just position, not insert, just some position some soft, soft cotton wool at the entrance to create a seal. Um, so the hairs don't go in. And I'm happy with that. The patient was really happy. I airdropped them a copy of the video. Take care, guys.